Let's ride. How you like that? That's my new hey now. What is let's ride from? I heard it on a radio show and I said, okay, that sounds all right. All right. So, so all right. We'll start again. Shock? Yeah, that's, <laughs> it was on Sports Talk. All right, here we go. Let's start over. Hi, this is Michael Uslin. You're listening to Batman on Film. I'm vengeance. I have given a name to my pain. Right. Welcome to the social hour of Batman on Film podcast. I am the founder of Batman on Film, Bill Ramey. Joining me today is uh uh Rip Van Winkle himself, the uh the the senior BF contributor from New Jersey, Pete Vera. How are you, sir? How are Rip you, Pete? Van Winkle. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't have that much hair. <laughs> you got that beard. Oh, uh, I do have the beard. I do have the beard. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. yeah. That makes up for it. All but right. I, I'm doing good. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not as good as the, you know, the Texas Rangers, but. I'm well, there you good. go. You never know. I mean, uh, Texas Rangers were awful last year. Awful. Now they're in the uh, American League Championship Series a year later. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not a baseball, you know, I'll, I'm a sports guy. Uh, the Rangers are my team. I watch. I've watched. God, I've watched probably 80, 75 percent, eighty percent of the games this year. So I'm. In, I was. This is all my all, influence, by the way. This is all. I my was. Influence. I was all invested. I'm all in on this team, and it looked like at the end they were going to spit. You know, they led the the American League um, Central by or West. West. Yeah, we're in the West. Um, they led the West by uh, for like a hundred and. 30 160 some crazy number of days and then and then just mm -hmm. at the very end had a meltdown and got in yeah. as a wild card and i didn't That's i right. didn't you know there was like i didn't know if they were going to get the wild card you know after all that and then they get in and they go and they they haven't lost in the playoffs yet well you've had an interesting season i mean you signed the best pitcher in baseball in the offseason he gets hurt yeah. and goes down so you, i guess your expectations for a championship are a little diminished at that point and then you know, you're able to go off on a postseason run. So this is a this is a big deal. Yeah, you haven't been there since 2011, 10, 11. Yeah, the World 11. Series years. Yeah, Did you make it in twelve. I don't remember. No, um, not so, to that. No. Yeah, this is it. Good. To, so you end the drought, and uh, you know you've already hosted the World Series. So maybe you'll actually get That's the true. To for the for That's Rangers true. to play in the World Series. And uh, this is the new ballpark. Yeah. And uh, what's his name? Um, Corey Seager won a, won a World Series at, at yep, the Ra Dodgers. Rangers ballpark when he was with the Dodgers at twenty in twenty twenty. So yeah, the bubble maybe season, got some so. maybe got some mojo there. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. And then we're in the middle of college, and we're getting to that part of the year where there's all sport. Every sport is played. You know that brief mm -hmm. window. Yep. You, yeah, got you got the hockey season yeah, starts, yeah. I think, Wednesday, and basketball yeah. season will start soon. So, yeah. And then football's in full swing, and then baseball's in the, you know, championship series, World Series. So it's like the complete opposite of like July 5th, when that is like the deadest sports day in, in the world, when there's nothing, there's no mm -hmm. sports being played at all, you know, yeah. whatever the, you know, the right after the All Star break. So, all right. So we're going to move from uh, witty banter, sports witty banter to uh, DC. DC on Lad calls. How about we dig up Lad calls? No, Lad call. I'd Lad rather bring Koff. back the web TV before I bring back the Lad cough. Yeah. Lad cough, Kasab, 220, 221, whatever it takes. Whatever it right, takes. Pete? Yeah. Oh, baby. Um, so uh, Variety, our old friend, Tatiana Siegel. Mm -hmm. I think she's, I like it. 
way she writes, but she's been doing could, this for a long time. She's yeah, one of the there, OGs when it comes to there, there's a there's a contingent there's a uh, a segment of fandom that uh, can't can't stand her. Why well, can't stand? She tells the, the truth. The truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tells them what you she, they don't you hear. know people don't like to hear what they don't want to hear. That's why that's why a lot of these grifters can keep on grifting it because they are being you know they make up shit and but they're telling they're telling these people what they want to hear and it's, it doesn't even matter it seems like you know some people just like to be let down I don't know yeah so um, sure had a report in Variety mainly about Aquaman two I mean I could we could just say well here's here's the gist of the article Aquaman two is a was a complete clusterfuck. As you know, while it was shooting, uh, so which isn't new, like to be brutally honest, there's there's nothing in this article that I haven't really heard before. Yeah, they no, went into some detail, she went into some details about specifics, but yeah. we already knew Aquaman 2's a mess. Uh, we already knew all the casting changes and blah blah blah. You know, like it's I okay, I was gonna the strikes suck, but they got, okay, they got yeah, read something like since it's about essentially about Aquaman 2. I don't want to get into all the details. There's a lot of that stuff like that, you know, like the Johnny Depp, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Amber Heard. Mara. Amber Heard. All that drama, court nonsense. I don't, I don't, I don't care. care. I don't care I'm about just, any of that. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter to me. You know, it doesn't matter. I don't care if they were trolling. I mean, apparently they could say, according to her, they were tr trolling her on the set and not treating her very well and whatever. But, uh, you know, essentially Aquaman 2 has been testing poorly. I've heard that for a long time. Other people, you know, that's not that's not a news flash. Nothing Batman nope. on films. I've heard for months people walking out yeah. of Aquaman 2 test screenings. <laughs> um, you know, they did lots of reshoots. And of course, Warner Brothers does PR and said, oh, we, it finished uh, under budget and only with a week of reshoots. So we don't know. We know that's not true. Um, I don't know about the, if it finished under budget or not, but there were more than just a week of reshoots and they recut and recut and reshot and reconfigured. And there are no DCEU cameos in it. Obviously. I mean, there were going to be, I mean, mm -hmm. we had freaking Ben Affleck and Keaton. Well, Keaton. Hell Keaton shot originally shot the Bruce Wayne scene. And then I just hope they're released on the DVD. <laughs> That's all. And you know, it, it, then, then, Ben Affleck had to reshoot basically the same scene because of, you know, we don't know what the hell's going, you know, with the changes that came with DC on film at Warner Brothers. And anyway, and I think if they're at the point, Warner Brothers, you know, I've heard just talking to people that it's, it's like, let's just get this thing out and over with, you know? Sounds like Justice League. Let's just get it out. Yeah. Rip the bandaid off and go. I think the thing about it is, is that <clears throat> uh, according to the, you know, they quoted uh, some box office guru and they're saying that it's tracking about the same as uh, the original Aquaman, you know, uh, and, you know, we know the first one made over a billion dollars, but the, there's a caveat to that is that a lot of that, most of that was over like 700 million plus was overseas. Mm -hmm. A lot was in China. And, uh, I mean, it made like 300 million something plus in, in China and they're not expecting it to get that much, you know, this time for a variety of reasons. And so I'm not expecting it to be a billion dollars, but it could, you know, it could turn out to be, to do well, you know? Yeah. I mean, people do like Momoa a lot. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how, how, We'll see what this how the stink of DC is when this movie comes out again. You know, we'll see if uh Momoa's popularity kind of overshadows that. I Patrick Wilson yeah. will be a draw, I think. Yeah, I, I think there's enough of names in this movie that people want to go see. Yaha's been in a lot of things recently, too. So, you know, we will we'll see. Um, you know, and if there's as many monsters and kaijus and such as that were in the first one, I I, I think the uh audience in China and Asia would be uh would be down for it as well. Yeah. So I um I don't I do I do buy into uh DC DC stink. 
other than Batman. You know, there's 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 a there's my disclaimer, my caveat when it comes to that. I think there is from talking to people, and I've said it many times on this on this podcast and on BOF when I'm writing that people tell me it's a you know DC is a dead brand. DC on film is a dead brand other than Batman. So this will be a test for that because we're coming off of Black Adam was, didn't do well, Shazam two didn't do well. And of course, the Flash was a complete yeah, disaster. You know, and Blue Beetle, yeah, oh, yeah. So I forgot about that one. <laughs> yeah, which I liked. Um, I had you know I have yet I've seen parts of. I did see Shazam too. Take that back. I watched it. I actually watched it on a on a plane, on a plane on a plane ride to Las Vegas. Mm. So I liked um, them all. I thought they were all decent. It was okay. Black Adam was okay. Blue Beetle, I liked. It was like okay plus. I, I you know I you know it's Shazam. I mean not Shazam. The Flash came out. I you know I gave it a good really good review. I liked yeah. it, but. You know, I what I don't really buy into, and maybe I'm wrong, was that um, the fact that none of these films are connected to anything in the future affected, you know, affects the box office. I don't buy in the the lame duck theory because I think that the general audience overall, who make up by far the majority of the audience, doesn't care. They'll just go see a film if it's good or not. But I do think they'll that they will say, nah, DC, I, nah, I'm, no, too much, too much there. I'm not so. so sure because, I don't know, even the MCU seems to have lost steam. Like, recently the MCU hasn't really been building towards much. We don't really know. And uh, it seems like people have kind of been a little bit more disconnected with that. So I don't, I don't know if this whole, like, I don't know what to believe anymore. Like, because yeah. re- re- DC's been on such a weird streak lately that it's, it's kind of hard to judge because it's like, this is almost like I'm president territory, but I'm not so sure if people are all into the or not into the. the it it may just be the, something. I'm not. I don't well, know. If, if it's if it's superhero movie genre fatigue, which you know you can kind of start making a case for that. Like, I think there's a case ar- for that too. You know, there is an argument for that, and then you pop, then you add to the fact that you know, other than Batman, D- DC is just you know, dead brand. I mean, you combine those two and that's not good. You know, that's mm. not good. Cause the so flash shall- really bothers me. Cause it had ba- a bat had Batman in it. You know, people love that. Ba- it's so weird to me that like, I don't know. I, it did Batman finally take a hit with the flash. I'm, I, I don't, I, I, no, it, I don't think so. It you was, don't think so. It's, it's titled the flash. Okay. Yeah, but that that yellow oval and that logo was everywhere. We, you know, I just don't just think it. I don't. I don't. I like okay. I said before. I said I over. I overestimated the nostalgia for Keaton's return. I I was wrong about that. Uh, and the other Batman has been Affleck. I mean, we've seen. No one cared. You know, they the whole Justice League, BBS, all that. They just that. I just don't think they cared about the Flash. I don't think they cared about, and it was DC overall. And uh, I mean, solo Batman is all good. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I, the Reeves yeah. Batman looks so unlike the Justice League's yeah. DCEU Batman that there's no mistaking the two, right? Like, I, I, I think that's the one good thing about having the two of them actually released simultaneously is that you could see this Reeves Batman. It ain't got nothing to do with this other Batman. Like, it, yeah. it's it's that's as clear as day. I'll get into more of that. I got all kinds of thoughts about that route. And then, you know, then Joker, we got Joker two coming up. I'm sure that'll do well. Mm-hmm. It's Batman related. Joker is and the first one was popular a character, you know, anyway, the, I mean, it's the Joker. So again, I get, it goes back to, I think, I think solo Spider-Man and, and solo Batman. Or I think DC, out, I think superhero different. fatigue will be interesting to talk about when Joker comes out, because that movie was kind of like a cultural phenomenon. You know, it was different. It, it, people questioned the film in general, like kind of like you're praising this kind of like crazy person. You know, you got a lot yeah. of conversations about it. So we'll, we'll, I want I'm curious to see if that'll kind of continue with the second one or if people just be like, ah, we've been there, done it now. It's a franchise. Well, we'll see. I mean, they are. They are doing something different with the musical aspect mm-hmm. with Lady Gaga. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's going to drive a lot of people 
I'm sure. Yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of big fan base movie traffic. I guess you could. Call I said the it. same yeah. thing about The Rock, though. <laughs> Black Adam. Yeah. I thought The Rock's fan base would really just kind of flood the box office. I was wrong about that one. You know, but how big is The Rock's fan base? Maybe th- that's why I think he's just a really good PR guy because he made yeah. me believe he was the biggest star in the world, and I didn't even question. I was like, yeah, of course it's The Rock. Of course he's yeah, he's huge. Literally, <laughs> I, you know, because I, yeah, I, so cousins. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm not going to get into Aquaman. We'll see how Aquaman does here in a couple of months. I hope it does good, man. Cause I like the first yeah, I mean, one. I, look, look, I had yeah. fun with the, 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 the first Aquaman movie in the trailer. I thought the trailer was good. I enjoyed that. The black I was kind stuff. of like, yeah, on the trailer. I mean, it's just, I don't know how much different you can be with, with that. There's, you know, it's not a character like Batman that can, has so many different ways you can go with the character. I, um, I do think a lot of characters, because of their rogues gallery, and this doesn't include characters like Batman, Spider Man, or the Flash, uh, or even Superman, because they have such large galleries of, of villains. But like someone like Aquaman, it's like after Black, after Black Manta, and after Orm, what do you do? Yeah, like it, you know, like even well, someone you, who's the, as well versed as me, it's I'm trying to think who else should be the villain of the third movie so certain characters kind of limit themselves i think to maybe you gotta, a movie yeah. or something like that make up something you know this way make you don't oversaturate character. the market i think because that's about point, it it's totally flooded aquaman throws gallery ocean master and black manta there you go mm. pretty much it huh yeah huh anyway i look it i don't want it i want it to do well because it's a dc movie and it's a comic book movie and it's good for the genre and good for the dc brand but yes if it doesn't oof, oof, oh oh we've been I, here before I, I just you know we'll get into this in a second here so i guess and this one i mean people i don't know people are just stupid come on this one here uh th- how is this a shocker to anybody no one from the DCEU, I should say, you know, no one from that Justice League setup, the BVS, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, they can throw in Cyborg, Cyborg and Aquaman. None of those actors or those, those versions of the characters are returning for this new DCU under James Gunn and Peter Safran. I mean, isn't that clear as freaking day? When they said that's, they're, not, they're news. that's not news, that's, that's not new. We've heard that, we've known that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we did hear it. I mean, I, we, we, they, they said, heard you know, it for we, months about everybody, at least, at least in drips and drabs. Maybe the first time we've heard it from a legit source. I mean, has one, but you know, I know that, um, I, like, I put it on Twitter. I was like, I retweeted the Variety tweet and and said, you know, like, duh, who, you know, who, who, who believed otherwise? And apparently, I mean, recently the only speculation was Gal, right? She said something on Twitter. I I, 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 believe, and it's like, I don't know, like, she's not gonna. I always say, like, these guys, these people are actors. They're not going to publicly turn down work, right? Like, let's be honest. It's look. As soon as Gunn and Saffron came in, and they said that they're, you know, it was a reboot. They're starting over with a new DCU. It was clear that none of those those actors, those you know, those big D, those actors who played those big DC roles in those films, would, were going to return. And and the fact that. Uh, you know, Warner Brothers or James Gunn didn't come out just straight out and and make a big, you know, make a big announcement right after. And no one's coming back. That's look, that's that's like Is that what people ben- want. Do people want like production value and to be awed by announcements? Like, is DC on film really run any differently now than it was like four or five years ago under guys like Hamada or even Emery? Like these things, these stores are still coming out in the trades. People still don't want to believe the trades. Everything's still kind of vague to be well, that, with. Like that goes. Has, is it is the business model actually changed? That no. It that goes back to people 
they want they want to hear what they want to hear and they don't they want, want to hear plan. what they okay they they want you know they'll complain about James Gunn or the Warner Brothers not saying definitively because it gives them hope they can still say well no one said it yet no one said definitively and gal gal did you know said this well look look all of that is why are these this, people this, so hung up on these actors th this is pr know. this is pr it is um you know when gun and saffron got that gig head up dc studios they still had a lot of films under the old regime left to uh release right yeah and so you're not gonna you, you just don't come out and say it specific you know you don't have a press release saying um none of these actors are coming back you just you you gotta think i'd be you know, on the floor look, from Matt look, Reeves. look look that people hey, that's exactly what it is you don't it's bad pr and it's and it was obvious they're rebooting they're starting over yeah so they're I just, not I've known come this, back. i've known this for so long i mean that's Cavill the tried bottom it with line. the power play and black adam and that didn't work out yeah you know, i don't I just, care I, yeah then, then that's it they they they've uh, they said it they, they said in the article that momo is going to be lobo they said yeah. it's possible it may be in the next and maybe in justice league superman or it may be in his solo movie because that's another thing too like another dc character not really from the yeah. superman world we're gonna get is thrust yeah. into the justice league movie because that's we're, what this is this isn't a superman movie we're, we're, getting, we're, gonna, we're gonna get to that it's just um it was obvious that's the bottom line and if you didn't get that that's on you it's not on james Gunn. It's not on warner brothers it's not on anybody else not. I mean, I guess people could have been like, well, maybe Ezra's going to be back. I don't know. You could have said that. But then again, who really cares? The Flash didn't light the world on fire and Ezra's I'm controversial. Just, I'm is. just saying, I'm just saying, it was obvious. They were re redoing this thing. There were, There's too much baggage and stink on even the characters that had success. Wonder Woman. So my question Awful for Man. you is... Yeah. The stink is that bad. Why are you rebooting so fast? Shouldn't you take a break well, and kind of let the stink, yes. you know, that's yeah. That's what that's what should happen, but that's not what's going to happen. If you read, I mean, even in this article, they talk about how bad uh, Warner Brothers wants to, is pushing this, you know, this shared universe, you know, with the D maybe I mean, they the should just DC ride IP. the Batman out and then after Reeves is done, then they should do it. Maybe that's enough time. I, yeah. I think you need I've to said put that. pause on all of this because, yeah, I, everything except for the Reeves stuff because that's proved to be a smash. Yeah, yeah, I look, I'm with you. You're preaching to the choir here, but that's not what happened. And hell, they done, you know, they're getting Superman out before the freaking Batman part two. You know, um, and I mean, they, they, like, they, they've already recast from rises to BVS. There wasn't enough time to reboot rise to BVS. People weren't ready for Batman rebooted. They just really weren't. I don't think they were fans were fans want more of everything. They, that's why you, I, you make all these animated I, movies. Look, I can't disagree with that, but, um, I will say, I think if that... And BVS was pushed back. Remember, we're supposed to come out like 14. If it just had been better. I know people, there are people who love it. And I'm not... If you love it, bless your heart. Love it. Put it in your... You know, stream it. Watch it on a loop 24-7. That's fine. Um, but it, did, it, the, it didn't appeal to... It did it not... Now you get into the whole thing of... You know, we've... They, you know, they've talked about that, that with Goyer and all that, 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 you know, they should have done Man of Steel 2. That was the plan. And then they, you know, Warner Brothers wanted the freaking wanted their MCU. They, it's, it's, they still, even there's a whole different regime in there. They're still wanting their MCU. Because even at it, its worst, which it is right now, the MCU still makes a shit ton of money. Yeah. Which is crazy. <laughs> well, <laughs> like Captain look, Marvel made a billion dollars. That movie's horrible. <laughs> Yeah, I read an article also, you know, it was Hollywood Reporter this morning um, that the Daredevil is completely 
They're yeah, shut, that all that shit, today. yeah, shutting that shit down and gonna reboot it. They're gonna reboot it. It's 150 million down the journey. It's nice. It's actually kind of nice to see that Marvel can struggle because it proves that there, there is no cheat code. <laughs> they're real people. Yeah. They just they went on that insane hot streak and now they're you know, I, you know kind yeah. of fizzling out. And how you know a lot of the you know, you had the I guess. I didn't ever watch it because I don't have Disney Plus for, and I've said why. You know, I don't. I'm not a Disney guy. I'm not a Marvel guy. I'm not a Star Wars guy. So yeah, uh, but you the, weren't a baseball guy, so you met me either. Remember that? I've watched baseball my whole life. It's not you a watched, baseball. You watched the game and then you got bored. <laughs> well, if they were when they are winning, it's easier to stay invested. You know, I mean, I mean, I, look, I'm a casual fan. That's that's true for for any any casual fan of anything. If it's good, you know, then you're invested. So, but now you get me off my train of thought, but it's, I'm just saying it. It's, I've said it ad nauseum. It's, you, you're, you're too late to the game here and you done failed at it once, Warner Brothers, with your shared DC universe. Now you're going to do it again. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. I think that, hey, ride the Batman with Reeves, let him finish his deal and then do it. But that's not what's going to happen. They're going to, we're going to have freaking Superman. Even if they want to still do the whole now. shared universe thing, I think you just need to pause because everything seems to be taking a hit right now. Well, number one, I think they should just make good DC movies. And don't worry about them connecting. All right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to channel my inner Chris Nolan, what he told him 10, 10 plus years ago, you know? Um, secondly, either way, I think they should wait with that. Uh, but, hey, it ain't happening. So that's, you know, I, I, I'm going to be yelling at, you know, at the mm -hmm. sky, you know, when it comes to that. So, um, but, you know, kind of leads me into this. So no one's coming back. I don't, I, I've said it again, if you were, if you, that shocks you or you're disappointed, you, you go look in the mirror. That's, that's, there's your, that's, that's who you should be mad at. You shouldn't be mad at Warner brothers. You shouldn't be mad at James Gunn. You should be mad at Peter Saffron. It's it was obvious as hell. I don't care what you know. I don't care about the Rock Cavill power play. We know that was a power play, and it was never going to happen. We know you know. I don't care what uh, uh, Gall said about Wonder Woman three. Um, a lot of that is just you know. Of course, she wants to play Wonder Woman again. Yeah, that's a okay? huge check. <laughs> yeah, that's, so she's her, that one movie, but gives her more money than any of this us and its audience every season of life yeah of course she wants so it. i'm sure there's not she's not gonna she's not gonna say no i'm not i'm not gonna play one woman ever again you know so and i'm quite sure that james gunn and when she's met with them if she met with them and no and it, she knew i wasn't gonna happen she knew the plan i mean they shit can wonder woman three come on and that that right there told you i don't you know i told you that, that she told you all you wanted to hear right there when it came to that There'll be a Wonder Woman, I'm quite sure, and the do this new DCU, but it's not going to be her. No. And if one, but, if, we, if 84 was like a huge smash hit, then maybe, but it, it wasn't. Like there was, they're 50 50 on Wonder Woman. I think if there was no COVID and that came out in, you know, traditional without all the COVID, you know, went, without the HBO Max thing mm -hmm. like it did, I don't know how that would have, I don't think it would have done as well as the first one because I don't think it. I, I didn't like it all that much. To be, you know, I'm not going to get into a, a lot conversation of about Wonder Woman 2 and Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 1984. I, I didn't care for it all that much, and I'm a big fan of the first one. So, But there is, and I've, I said this before, I said this a while back, uh, when, it, when the conversation of like, well, were they going to keep any of these other characters and blah, 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 or actors in the same roles and then recast others and new continuity? And I said, well, you know, they're rebooting, so reboot. And that means re re recast. I said, however, James Gunn, the, the creator, the filmmaker, the writer, is going to have a conflict with James Gunn, the studio executive. And the studio executive, James Gunn, is going to have to make some hard decisions because he directed Suicide Squad, the Suicide Squad. And he did, yeah. and he is the, you know, basically the the showrunner the man behind Peacemaker, mm -hmm. which was both, you know, uh, you had Amanda Waller and 
the Suicide Squad. I know the Suicide Squad is kind of a a Batman for everish soft reboot, but it still was part of the old DCU. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you had you had uh, Justice League show up in Peacemaker. You know, actually, you had Momoa and Ezra Miller. Yes. You know, actually, the actors, not just you know, like Superman was just some generic. It was a shadow. Shadow Superman, the actor, whoever, and, and Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman as well. It's so, but he is, you know, we're getting the we're getting Peacemaker two, or season two, and you get this Waller series with Bola Davis, and it's going to be part of the new DCU. They're making the transition. So, shenanigans at hand here, James Gunn. I, he, he's in charge he, and yeah i mean I, I Davis look, kicks ass it's not it's not that hard i yeah. don't know I, I personally don't even care i'm just gonna sit down and watch whatever they, they're in so i'm kind of you know i'm like i at the end of the day i don't care either it doesn't make a difference in my life and i'm not gonna waste i'm not gonna hashtag up a storm or tweet and x or whatever the hell it's called up, upset just, about it just being a comic book fan and a person who reads a lot of comic books continuity and changing of continuity and reading stories from other continuities that are, you know, it's like, it, it's all just like null and void to me. Like whatever, this is just a story I'm going to read, you know, and that, I would, that's how I look at yeah. this stuff. This is just a show I'm going to watch. I would say that um, if you're going to reboot and you, what you're doing and you're creating a new DC film universe, then that should apply to everything. Yeah. Everything that's you plan on being connected. That includes, Sorry, Peacemaker John Cena. You know, you were part of the. Sorry, Viola Davis. That's just you know, I can see that it's a little bit of you. That you could see, you could say, okay, James Gunn, a little shenanigans here. You're not bringing back any of these other actors, which I agree with. But the some stuff you've been involved with with the old DCEU, you're gonna transport these you know bring these characters along with you into the new dcu huh. but and remember, davis goes back to the original dceu yeah <laughs> i mean she goes yeah. back to yeah to, i mean to the original suicide squad so mm-hmm. i don't know uh whatever it doesn't at the end of the day it doesn't bother me i don't really care it but makes me wonder i actually talked about I, hostiles, the harley yeah. quinn situation like does is margot robbie now post barbie does Margot Robbie need Harley? I don't think so. I think Margot can re- move on. Like I, I actually kind of think we've seen the end of Margot as oh Margot, as yeah, especially yeah, with well, Gaga as Harley in Joker too. Yeah, you know? that's you know, well, that's me. that's a Matt Reeves type of thing. I mean, you know, it's like the Batman. What I meant to say, it's it's mm-hmm. it's its own deal, its own version. Um, but yeah, you know, it's Black Label, whatever they're called, Elseworlds. I'm sorry, Elseworlds they call it uh, DC on film DCL swirls, but um uh, yeah, Mar look, Margot Robbie didn't really even ever need Harley. Harley needed Margot Robbie. Mm-hmm. She's huge. You know? And Harley, to be honest, didn't didn't really move the needle for her. She was still she was big before and big after because the Harley stuff just wasn't didn't it was it was big within she already did Wolf of Wall Street and stuff. Oh like yeah, that, right? yeah. I think she was one. all kind of stuff. You know, Tanya. I mean, she's done all kind of, all sorts of stuff. And 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 now Barbie, she's. I mean, she's in the freaking A plus plus level. Yeah. I mean, she went from A plus to A plus plus with Barbie. Mm-hmm. So no, so she doesn't need Harley, even though she likes playing the character. I'm sure, but that's that's over with. So I just think it's like. I would just, I, but yet, you know, Peacemaker was a big hit, but hey, when you're in charge, you get to make the call, you get to make the call, right? He's on the show. Yeah. I mean, and but, let's be honest, everything he's done has worked. And speaking of that, being in charge, there still is, in, with this article, um, DC Studios, Gunn and Saffron, they are not, they don't have the autonomy that Foggy has with the MCU. So it's still different. It's still, uh, you know, they, you know, like the stuff that HBO or Max is doing, the Penguin, 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, Max has creative input into it. You know, they're not, they just, they can't just, you know, where the, you know, Disney plus just, they just air the stuff, yeah. you know, uh, and, and every it, company's different. And it, and it, and it, well, it kind of goes back. Even though we're talking about different mediums, but we're talking about this, but we're talking about DC and Marvel characters, whether it be film or TV or comic books, it, it's still Disney and the MCU and Marvel studios have done things very much historically like the uh, Marvel comics, as far as mm-hmm. how connected they are and how they, you know, the editorial uh, way of doing things and so forth and so on. And, and whereas Warner brothers, even going back to, you know, the old days with Superman 78 and really starting with Batman 89, they've done it kind of like DC always did it where, you know, each character had their own little worlds Mm -hmm. and their own editors and were their own little things. And if, what was going on in Batman solo comics really didn't have anything to do with Batman over here in justice league or brave and the bold. They were, they were different. Whereas Marvel is connected New York city, one editor, you know, the whole thing. So we still see that, you know, that's why I always say there's historically, there's a difference. Just make good DC films. Quit worrying about connecting this thing. Cause you're in a position where Superman legacy, you know, sucks. And I don't mean sucks. Uh, it's quality wise. I mean, it like it, it, it just, it's another, it does just as well or worse than man of steel or Superman returns. I mean, and you got all your eggs are in this basket. Mm-hmm. You're, you know, your shared universe eggs are in this basket with Superman legacy. It's springboarding everything going forward you you're i mean it's like you're you know if if this thing if superman legacy bombs it will just everything that comes after it will be just just canned that's just you want to see react everyone talks about how reactionary warner brothers is wait and see what happens in legacy bomb if legacy bombs i don't say when well hell i don't want that who's going to be who's going to own warner brothers by the time superman legacy comes out because there's another thing yeah, I've heard. I heard. I'm Scuttle surprised how often that. Warner Brothers get sold, man. I just, um, I heard, shocked, really. I heard Universal was just waiting in the wings to buy Warner Brothers for a while now, and I've heard that from two or three different people, unrelated, who who knows mm-hmm. knows their shit when it comes to that kind of sort of stuff. Why did they just buy it the first time? Well, I mean, why did they? Why did they? If they've been waiting for so long, I, why did I, they I, like I, Discovery I, outbid them? That's just it's it's. I, 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 maybe this is after discovery because and then mm-hmm. once seeing how discovery is kind of just you know cut 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 cutting it down you know cutting cutting the cutting fat and whatever yeah. whatever analogy you want to use till you know they bought it for what uh pennies on the dollar yeah. from what at and paid for it originally you know so um Anyway, that's a whole different thing, you know. Rumors that Warner Brothers will, what Chris Nolan be laughing? He's gonna be laughing his ass off, you know. If that was the case, it he leaves Warner Brothers because of AT and T shenanigans, and then he goes to Universal with, yeah, he's for, back. Uh, well, he's gone <laughs> to Universal with, uh, you know, for uh, Oppenheimer, and was Tenet Universal he, too? No, Tenet was Warner Brothers. Okay. I don't remember. Yeah. He's been at Warner Brothers for 20 years until, you know, until they, AT&T wanted that, wanted HBO Max to, you know, succeed so bad. And they put everything in the, you know, same day and mm-hmm. as theater release and tenant. Um, he was, you know, he's a own big screen guy. You know, he's old school. Dude, he's old. So he is. I'm sure holds amazing to me. Enjoy that. It's amazing to me how he is he the only director. I mean, he there may be a couple. You can tell me somebody what directors bring in an audience. Oh, Zach Snyder. 
can't no one can see my look on my face <laughs> I'll, just, I'll let that dramatic pause you know what i'm i mean <laughs> totally that was layup for me <laughs> it yeah, was like i know she was like oh, i know where i'm going but with this. seriously what i mean he is one of a very few spielberg at one time today maybe not as much mm. but, yeah, i mean i thought i talked about i think nolan's him. the biggest in, in the game not not only right now i'll probably yeah he, he's got to be not only right yeah. now but Holson historically agree, but he's and, and his, historically directors that have such cachet and has such are such a name a brand that they will they drive an audience they bring in an audience it, that I, it's inarguable to me that that look at Oppenheimer it was a freaking World War II era biopic of uh, the dude who held oh, dude who invented yep. the nuclear Nolan, bomb yeah and and look i love the movie but i'm also a history nerd and i'm a nolan fan and i like movies it's a it's a good movie but it, it ain't no summer blockbuster and you no, know what it did it's nolan. It, it performed like a summer blockbuster nolan. In, the midst of, in the midst of barbie mania god oh my that that is just that is impressive. That's why he's Nolan. That's it. That's just, it's the Nolan effect. So I think it's inarguable that no, no one can, no one can argue that Nolan didn't drive that audience. Despite you know, it's a good, it's a good film. You know, it had good word of mouth. But come on, people wouldn't saw that first and foremost because it was a Chris Nolan movie and he directed the right. Dark Knight trilogy. That's right. And Interstellar and freaking. <laughs> um, Greatest Inception. conclusion to any trilogy, Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. So, anyway. Anyway, we got off a little tangent there with the Universal buying Warner Brothers stuff, but whatever. So I don't care who owns them, to be honest, either. Like, if they, if, It's not a big deal to me because the, the only, it's, it only becomes a problem for me if they're like, all right, well, we're not going to do this anymore. This stuff, this, this, this comic movie stuff. We're not doing it. Like if Universal says that, they don't have beef. But like, I don't really care who owns the Warner Brothers. I they really don't, don't have. Care. Well, and they don't have any. They don't have any comic book IPs, do they? Superhero IPs, Universal. Universal. I believe I, they they bought the rights to like Hulk back in the day. I don't know if they still oh, have yeah, them. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what's going on. Okay, with that. they do. I, you know, I think yeah, they bought they bought you. some Marvel stuff. I don't know which ones. Off it was Hulk. My head. Hulk's one of them, but like remember when Marvel went bankrupt, they sold the rights to everything and anything just yeah. for a check. So they were yeah. selling off the rights to every character that anyone would give them a check for. So I think I'm sure there's other do. ones. I, I there's still a every, couple. Yeah. I think everything Marvel is owned by Disney now, except for maybe Hulk. Because now you got all the the Fox stuff is and and mm -hmm. so because they just bought Fox, yeah. Spider Man, Sony, Sony solo Spider Man belongs to Sony. So they mm -hmm. still have that right. So, so Sony yeah, was Spider Man. Probably. And then Hulk, and there's because there's been, you know, uh, rights issues of why the Hulk has only appeared in the Hulk and Spider Man. Like, I think are basically stuff. are very similar to the rights. Like that's why you know, like, yeah, so he's able to work Correct. with them. Correct on so on a solo movie because they get. And I guess check. Universal hasn't had any desire yeah. to do a yeah. solo movie, so whatever. They just they also um, just don't want to play with <laughs> for some reason they don't want to play with marvel i don't know why you think they would be like all game for it because they were like yeah give us the sony deal and we'll take the check and they don't want to deal with it for some reason well circling back to you know um the, these actors from the dcu films except for a couple john cena and uh I just don't want to get all the outrage online. Like I'm seeing even people like freak out over Ezra. I'm like, why are you guys so attached to you these know actors? Why. You the know characters why. are bigger than the actors. Yes. You should well, be just excited that the character is yes. still going forward. Who cares who plays them? Yes. Except for Viola Davis and John Cena, of course. Outliers. I guess. But I don't okay. know. Viola but, Davis. Well, James, James Gunn. I mean, come on. He did. Uh, he did Suicide yeah. Squad, Peacemaker. He's got a little inside track, and he's in charge. So, like I say, he can do what he wants. Sure, but, he can do what he wants. Uh, but apparently, you know, we've heard this for a while too. Momoa may not be Aquaman, but he may show up as Lobo. Either in <laughs> oh, Kowalski. Lobo in uh, 
and they even mentioned in the article, maybe even Superman Legacy. If it's going to start me off. Uh, Superman Justice League. Yeah. Or Superman. It should be Superman. <laughs> Superman Kickstarter? <laughs> Kickstarter. We're, we're kickstarting the new D- Superman. Yeah, DCU Let's Kickstarter. Kickstart the, That's the yeah, DCU movie. Kickstarter. Yes. How many characters can I fit in this? <laughs> All of them. As many as you can. Many Let's you can dump the toy there. chest. Let's dump the toy chest. So, but so Momoa is going to make the jump, allegedly, apparently, and that's been going around a while. You know, that's been going on for a long time, and some people met, don't want to believe it for some reason. He he met with, and he and he he came out and said, you know, he was all happy when he after he met with, like when he came out of the meeting with Gunn and Saffron, it was completely one eighty opposite of after Henry Henry Cavill met with him. Yep, Metsy still know? had a job. <laughs> yeah. So, and I'm down with that because, like you said, like we said earlier, Ocean Master, Black Manta. What do you got? What's le- what's left for Aquaman three? Maybe it's best for him to play Lobo, and that seems to be more the character. Everyone's always said he's been born to play Lobo. So, look, I'm not a, a Lobo expert. I don't know if I've read. I don't know. I've probably never read a like a Lobo story centric story. I've probably come across some Superman stuff with Lobo in it when I was younger and it's okay, but, but I'll tell you what, yeah. I get really excited for Perry white. That's not yeah. happening. Well, they're going to, yeah, they'll announce some more, but I'm still get back to my problem with, you know, my issue with Superman legacy. And yes, I know I haven't seen it yet and I don't know what the story is, but I'm still, I don't know why you have to, I don't know why you have to have all these DC characters in there. Other than it's like, look at this. We are a shared universe and we're going to springboard these characters into other projects. I, there's, yeah. it's, you know, make a damn Superman movie with Superman characters like Barry White, Jimmy Olsen, and the Kents and whoever. I'm else, sure Lois you know? Lane, Lane will be in the movie. She's got to fall off a building, right? Superman's got to save her. Oh, she's already like, been cast. Yeah. She's, you Rachel know, like, I'm sure she'll have major, I don't know. I just, it, how much time is Superman going to interact with Lois if he's dealing with all these other characters? I, I know I don't know anything about the movie, but nothing that's been released about this movie honestly excites excites me. You know? It well, I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you what really doesn't excite me is this rumor that's gone around. Uh, and I will say I've heard it from some legit folks. But I, I it, again, rumor, scuttlebutt, that the entire explanation for how this new DCU comes to be and what happened to the old DCEU will be through some kind of uh, interdimensional uh, mojo shenanigans by Batmite. Hey y'all, it's Bill Ramey, founder of Batman on Film. Let's take a quick pause in this podcast for these words from our sponsor. Uh, This is this is the rumor (laughs) on your face. Well, it's funny because like it's something I never thought I'd ever see. To be honest, like I never thought I'd ever see anything like that. If they with that character, they really. If look, James Gunn is quirky, and and likes quirky comic book stuff he teased batmite in season one of peacemaker okay so yeah so i'm actually surprised it, it, it's not mixy um everyone knows i love imps so the introduction of imps isn't really negative for me especially if we're going to do toy if chest they li- if they were legitimately for real use that is the, the how what why there's a new universe and what happened to the old one is that bat might snapped his fingers and you know created a new one i i find that i i just i i, I shake my head and i don't know if gonna be to me. he snaps his finger we'll see but I, I mean he can bet the, the imps can bend reality to their will that is the nature of fifth dimension beings in, in our dimension but from you know mostly i really read a lot of uh mixopolitic stories in superman but um if they're if you're going to if you have to have a way to explain it, 
and why do, do you have to explain it? Way, just do it. I, I don't I don't I don't know why, but if you if there needs to be the explanation and the why and the how and the because, I don't really disagree with them do, using imps yeah, to get that done. Because you're already like I said, you're already if you're already doing toy chest Batman, then I already know what I'm expected for. Uh, What's what I'm toy ch- okay, explain to me what toy chest Batman is. I'm pretty but, sure. I know, but I just Batman do. is I need to see Batman with Nightwing and Batgirl and the signal. And I need Batwing, the person, not the plane. You know, I yeah. need Huntress. You're like, I need the extended Bat family. I need it now. I don't need real explanations. Just put them on the screen. I'll be happy. You know, like, and you're so just you dump it out the toys and you're going to have Superman, Batman, Captain Adam. You're going to have fight. They're going to fight Dr. Phosphorus and Solomon Grundy. And that's your movie. Like, that's okay. that's what toy chest. That's okay. kind of the MCU to me. It's toy chest. Okay. Movies. All right. That's a I, I love that. I love that title. That's that's what toy chest Batman. Yeah. It, because I'm, if you're doing that and I know what you're doing, then it's acceptable. Because you can't put an imp in Reeves's world. It just no. it doesn't work, you know. But if you're gonna do this no. supernatural ex you know, extraordinary, extraordinary universe, I can buy it. But then again, I'm a comic book reader. Yeah. Okay, that means that means that Batmite will like. If that's the case, then Batmite shows up in Brave and the Bold. He possibly could. Yes, I don't. I don't know what that story is even about. Okay, but now, if that Batman is connected to Peacemaker, then yeah. well, uh, I yeah. would expect. All, so, I dude, would say all, that them interacting it's all connected. is the ordinary. All connected. Then yeah, man. like at some point, Batman might interact with Batmite. Batmite so, is obsessed with Batman. It's it seems to be the inevitable. <laughs> how do you think that goes over with the general audience used to stuff like Dark Knight trilogy, the Batman, and then all of a sudden you got Batman and this freaking um uh what what do you got? It's imp, 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 I am and an imp, imp. See, I'm not a, uh, I'm not I, a show. I see, I Oof, think you know, just Marvel's like Marvel's already set the precedent for like these crazy between Ant Man and Loki and um, I know, but you know, what I know, they're but doing now Doctor Strange. Talking, I think they've kind of opened the door for that. For DC but we're talking stuff. about Batman and what audiences are used to seeing in live action Batman on film since 1989, where Batman has been mm. relatively realistic. I said relatively, okay. Um, you know, I the think only the thing far- I have to judge that is the flash and that no that we know what happened with that. Yeah, the farthest the farthest world. I mean it doesn't it tell you what people like what if we say Batman's Teflon and Batman solo Batman works and you know yes Matt what Matt Reeves is doing <clears throat> is similar to you know this the approach that it's more similar to the approach that Chris Nolan took than say what we got in Batman and Robin, but you know, cause you had, you did have, I mean, that's probably the farthest you pushed it with, with that stuff. Cause you had yeah. flipping, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Freeze, literal Mr. Freeze falling into to freeze shit and becoming frozen and ice gun mm-hmm. and a whole nine yards and poison Ivy being poisonous. And, and then, you know, dumb bang, bang and all that. Bomb. So, yeah. So, um, I don't know. I think they, I, I think I could see some people that will, you know, laughing that, laughing themselves right out of the audit, the theater and walking out if something, you know, it, and braving the bolt and, and bat and like pops up. But and it's like, go back to what you said. If it's a good movie, then nobody's walking out. If it's bad, you know, like I, I have to, I got to see a pe- I, okay. I, I right. actually see with my eyes Fair. what Fair this enough. DCU is. You know, Fair like enough. I, we got nothing but casting. I need to, I don't have a trailer. I don't have a poster. I don't have a costume. All I know is it, who's, who's what and what's wrong. Like I need to, I need to kind of see the tone and to judge it. You know, it's like anytime you walk into like a new superhero movie and you're walking into somebody's vision of a character that like, it's like, I remember like when I walked into BVS the first time and I got a taste of what this Bruce Wayne was like, you know, like it's kind of like this new feeling sensation you get because it's it's all new right like it's it's under somebody else's vision it's their style it's their eye i i need to have that experience with superman to get a taste for it i can only assume 
through what they tell me what the movie's going to be about. I can be dead wrong. I don't think I am, but like I still need to see it. I need to see a pro some finished product, and whether that's a teaser or a trailer or something, I need to. I need to really judge it that way because right now it's just all casting stuff. And I'm like, all right. I, I'll put it this way with me because I, I I always preach, you know, don't overreact. Like, you know, with casting, you know, Heath Ledger, Robert yeah. Pattinson, you know, I've always, you know, I, 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 I've, I've said, I've always said, don't judge casting till you see the film. Don't judge, um, you know, when you like, Dark Knight Rises, and you had Catwoman. You had, well, hell, you and the and the Batman. And the Batman, you had Joker, Penguin, Catwoman, the Riddler, big the big four basically, uh, and Alfred, and Gordon, and all of this, and Falcone, and Kinsey. I mean, all of them. You know, you son yeah. of a bitch. Um, <laughs> you know, Bach, McKenzie, Bach, McKenzie, Bach. Yeah, you son of a bitch. Um, and people are like, you know, is it is it over? Is there too much here? Is there too many characters? And then it's not. You know, it's ensemble piece. So yeah, I mean, like that too. Don't judge. Like, oh, well, it seems it seems stuffed. The cast is stuffed. It's you know, well, there's hardly exploded. any Joker in the movie. So it's, you know, yeah, you know. that too. It's bloated. You know, you got all this. It's bloated and blah blah blah. So I'm also, you know, I, I say wait to see the movie. So yes, I'm with you. Wait till you see the movie. Wait till you see Superman Legacy. Wait till you see Batman Brave and the Bold, and all these other DC stuff under James Gunn and Peter Safran. But I will say, just with the, just with the fact that there are you know we're making a we're making a shared universe come hell or high water you know we're going to do it and and then the fact that you're stuffing all these non-superman characters in superman legacy which i was ex excited about and had my my excitement mm -hmm. you know I just, I think brought down tempered by it. by by all these you know other dc characters showing up in it and I, I can, I already know that this, this Batman, Brave and the Bold, is not, is not my Batman, quote unquote, not what I prefer. I, I just, I, 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 I'm, I don't, I don't care about any of that. I'll judge it when it gets here, yes, but I have no excitement for this any longer. At all. It's the, the way they go about it kind of bothers me because like, it's like you said, we're going to do this shared universe, hell or high water. Whereas, like, I felt like if if we go back to like 2008 and after Iron Man, if like three of the next MCU movies tank, do they still go forward with an MCU or do they just make sequels to Iron Man? I, I just feel like it, it, the MCU was organic. You know, it grew it was. naturally. It was. Those first couple movies are essentially standalone, they're not as connected oh, even... until you get to the post credit scene. Yeah, and I feel now that because we're we're twenty movies deep into the MCU, and now they're able to be a little bit more liberal with their cameos and their characters because they've been doing this so long. Warner Brothers just expects people to be like, "Well, they're used to this, so we don't need to go through the law." Again, they're putting the cart before the horse. They're putting everyone in this ensemble movie in Superman Legacy, and they're hoping it works. It feels like BVS all over again. That's well, right. I can't argue against that. I I. I was hoping for a Superman movie with Superman. I said, you know, I'm saying it again and again with Superman characters. I thought, you know, I thought the, the casting of Superman was great. I'm a fan of Rachel Brosnahan from watching Miss Maisel, Mrs. Maisel. I have a crush on her. And I like I'm her as Lois. Um, well, her name's Rachel too, Rachel Brosnahan. Okay, so, so you, at least you won't yeah. get confused. It's all, it's all, all connected. It's all connected. Rachel! All connected. That's right. <laughs> See, it's all connected. Even connected to Batman Begins. So, <laughs> but yeah, I'm just, I don't have any fan excitement for what's coming next. I would, if, if they said, <clears throat> if they took, if they, if they, if they were just going to make and say, hey, we're just going to make DC movies and we're going to make the best we can and we'll see what happens. I go, okay, I'm with you. But this is, you're and right. Tomorrow, the, MCU tomorrow was, they come out it, with like a bunch of Superman characters. I get excited. I'll tell you that much. Even, even even though that was the plan with 
starting with Iron Man and, you know, building this shared universe, even that was the, the plan, the success of the MCU was organic. Absolutely organic. Uh, it happened naturally because people came to see the movies. They got invested with the, the, the early movies and, and then it led into the bigger stuff. And yeah, you know, it, it was organic. This is just so forced. And the fact they've done it before and failed. And I, I going back, you know, even even di the great Disney slash MCU Marvel Marvel films that it's starting to see a little air coming out of the balloon. They're gonna have to change. They're changing the way they have to do things. That's it. Just it. You know. Like Apparently, I mean, and then then I just think with and also with the shared universe, you just get to the point. Marvel is almost at that point now. I, I say Marvel because there's a difference. MCU slash Disney. They're almost at a point. You you get to a point you can't go any further. What are you gonna do? And I think they're close to that. They're closer to that than they are from back in the beginning. Are you with me on that? Yeah, no, I, I you, think so. It's a hell of a lot easier to pull a Spider-Man or a Batman and reboot a solo character that, that we pro that's been proven it can it it works. I want to see what the new Captain America does because it's going to be you know? a Sam Wilson movie and I, uh, it, a Steve Rogers movie. So I want to see if that if that does anything. It's I'm just easier. Good. It's easier to reboot solo characters. Than it is, especially when you're Spider Man and Batman. That's they mm -hmm. have a little inside, you know, little, you know, they're they have an advantage there. Then an entire what do they do? They start over, and we're going to start over and have another. You know the shared universe. Shared universe. I mean, in which that's what freaking Warner Brothers is doing. It, but there's failed. The first one failed. Yeah, yeah I don't it know. failed tremendously. The, the only thing I could say is that there's new people running the show, so maybe it won't fail. They won't make the same mistakes as others. But I feel like uh, history is going to repeat itself here, just because. There's, I, I'll be brutally honest. Like when when all this stuff was announced for BVS, I got really excited. I was really oh, Wonder Woman's in it, Batman's in it. This is really cool. We're going to be starting, and we're going to have this whole expanded universe thing. Now I feel the total opposite now because if I went through that whole, um, you know, Snyderverse experience. Also, because like well, I just saw it, so like now you're just gonna do it again, slightly different. So it's like, so it's not Diet Coke, it's Diet Cherry Coke. Yeah, it's just you know, like all right, like I like I like Diet Cherry Coke. Don't be wrong, it's good, but it's like I I don't know, I still drink Diet Coke more often. I don't know, it's just it's a weird well, analogy. At, it's... at the end of the day, I still have the Batman universe, the Batman saga, and that's really all I I'm focused and care about at this moment. When we get yeah. to the DCU, I'll, I'll, I will look. I'll Batman on film. We'll cover, we'll cover the Brave and the Bold. I'll go see it. I'll judge it. I'll call it fairly. And I'll, if I like I it, I'll like tell it. you. If I don't, I don't. I don't want it to fail. But I have no excitement for this new DCU. Most my my biggest gripe, honestly, with Brave and the Bold is that it's a Damian Wayne story. I'm like, I don't like Damian. You know, I was like, uh, we're so far ahead in Batman's career. Like, <laughs> we're, we're like four Robins deep at this point. You know, we, get, we get to Damian. That's a lot of history to catch up on. Clearly doing. They're going 180 from what Matt Reeves is doing. Um, Even though, you know, Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson will be in his forties when he finishes playing mm -hmm. Batman, but he's playing a right now. He's playing like a thirty-year-old Batman, and that's fine, even though he's in his mid, getting up there. Yeah, he look, he takes care of himself. He he, he works. Yeah, out. that doesn't matter. So, but in the character, the character yeah. in the movie is thirty. Uh, I don't think he's going to be much older in the Batman Part Two because it picks up right after the Penguin, but and the Penguin starts right after. The Batman Part One, but thank God that's all connected, right? You, you got a young Batman in a very grounded, realistic world, and I guess what they're going with here is in the Brave and the Bold is, uh, you know, Bat God Batman, uh, toy chest Batman, as you call it, yeah, with the whole Bat family and a older, you know, an older Batman. So we shall see, but there you go. There's our analysis of the state of 
DC on film. Uh, as I feel uh, like we have this conversation, the same exact conversation. Like what? Well, yeah, we do. <laughs> Nothing's really to. changed. Nothing's changed. <laughs> <laughs> nothing's, uh, nothing's changed except for the except, date the article was published yeah except the fact that um you know the fact that the the, the writer strike is done and it looks like the actor strike will be ending here shortly and then from you know things i care about the penguin will go back to filming here yes i'm very excited about that i can't wait yeah. to cover them i mean we're at the end you know hell if we hadn't had these strikes we'd be uh I mean, we would be getting the Batman Part Two casting news. We would have already got probably got casting news for the Batman Part Harry Two. Harry White might have been cast, Jimmy Olsen. Yeah. Um, because you know, the Batman Part Two was supposed to start shooting next month. Mm-hmm. So, but as soon as that, I mean, as soon as that right uh the uh, the actor strike is done, we'll we'll definitely get casting news for the Batman Part Two. The penguin will start filming. Have I don't you know been how reading the penguin book, it's very good. Just because Oswald's having a bit of a resurgence by Tom King. I haven't. Tom King. Yeah, I was about to say, was yeah. that Tom King? I will read it when it's collected. Oh, you're going to like it. I think you're really going to like it. I'm going to read it when it's collected. Um, just like, uh, well, I did, I cheated on the, I did read the Riddler year one. That's good stuff. You That's were not a fan of it. Well, you good? Were you, were you, no, I liked it a lot. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, everything. Uh, there's it. not one thing I don't like about the Batman, whether it's the movie itself, the prequel novel, the Riddler, or what I hear about Penguin. Like, there's that's the big difference between the Batman verse or the Batman saga and the gun verse is everything they've said coming from the Batman saga. I'm like giddy about here's what you do about DCU. Here's what you can do lead it into the Batman part two. You read the you read the prequel novel. Mm-hmm. You read the the Riddler comic book, yeah. graphic novel. You watch the Batman. Yeah, you and watch, that's the right watch, order. Yeah. Yes. Then you watch all of the Penguin. And then you go see the Batman part two. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So you've got, what, look what you got here with the Batman saga. You've got a book novel. You have a comic book. Written by the Riddler. Yes. You have a movie, a live at big screen film, and mm-hmm. you have a prestige TV series on Max. And then you'll have another movie. Look at that, the different me- you get four different mediums there. Comics, and if you if you want to get even crazier, the film, imposter you could kind books. of call a prequel as well. Hmm. The imposture. You might be able to get because Tomlin. Hmm. Tom looks huge. Could they use any of any of the story beats from the imposter in the Batman part two? Hmm. We'll uh, see. I, I would love to see uh, this I, Leslie Tompkins. As I scratch my beard and say, hmm. Uh, and I posted that on, I posted a picture of the cover of that, of the imposter on Twitter. And if you haven't read it, you need to. Because oh, Matt yeah. and Tomlin, Matt's and Tomlin wrote it. And it's good stuff. You didn't know he's the co-writer on the Batman part two. I'm scratching my beard. Hmm. Again, Pete. Hmm. All right. There you go. All right. You gonna plug something? We'll get on. We get the hell yeah, out of here. Yeah. Uh, you can follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, Threads, and Zach Snyder's favorite platform, Vero, at Pete Illustrated. Follow uh, my news based podcast that I do with Eric Holzman, Straight Out of Gotham at Straight underscore O underscore G on Instagram, Twitter. We have a Facebook group and a Facebook fan page. Consider joining that. Um, I have another Spider-Man podcast at Italians for Spidey on Twitter. Check that out. And I'm all over Batman on film from dot com to YouTube uh, with all kinds of reviews on toys and comic books and all that jazz. So check that out. And the BOF podcast else? too. Yeah. When you got another one of those coming? I know, Su- I know Sunday. Have- Sunday yeah. with good old Kowalski. Lauer Lauer hijacked it for uh Sean Murphy, which was uh which was a great episode. Yeah. Sean Murphy returned to Batman on film to talk about what he's got going on. Even check that out. Please do so. Uh, friend of the show, Sean Murphy. Yeah. The creator of the white Batman, white Knight universe. That premise needs to ter- be turned into an animated film. The original white Knight. Yeah. I'm sure Batman, it Bat- Batman's the bat is perceived bat guy and Joker is the perceived hero. Yeah. I, I, 
Yeah. You can make it, you could take that premise and turn that into a 70, 80 minute animated film. Yeah. I think, absolutely. I, I think it'll get done sooner rather than later. Yeah. Here's hopes. I hope so. That's my new thing. I'm beating the banging. I've been banging the drum on that one. Pete. That's banging one. The drum. I like that one. Yes. I liked uh, beyond the white Knight. That was fantastic. I, I like everything in that universe. Everything they've come out with. I've liked. No, it's good stuff. The whole dead gum thing. All right. Speaking of dad gum, the dad gum original Batman on film. So go there. Batman dash on dash film.com. And Pete, I did tell the story. I listened to it. About the hour, how the dashes came to be. Yeah. So you did not know that. Now, you know, it's, it's what <laughs> I asked you one time was, we were, when I was, uh, when, uh, what was it? It wasn't gumbo night. It was the other, it was the second night. And I, you were just like, ah, dashes. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> well, it's, you got to an answer. I'm like, All there's, right, a, there's a whole story behind it. Um, I heard it. I finally yeah. heard it. That was back when I was, when as good as I, you know, I was, I was new to all this, you know? You've come a long way. Yeah. Yeah. Not come bad a for way. a Texas hack. Yeah. Not bad for a <laughs> Texas hat. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> now I got me being silly. All right. All right. Announcer, uh, Batman dash on dash film.com. Yes. Go there and you find everybody's stuff. Mine. Even the, even the little thing I get, they let me do there. I have a little podcast, a social hour. That's what I do. Everybody else, they let me do that. And you find Pete stuff there, Lauer. I run the website, the- actually. Yes. <laughs> I'm the, I'm you the well, webmaster. Don't you, didn't you know that it's really that I'm fake and Batman on film is really owned by Warner Brothers as a as a uh, uh, propaganda oh, you're, you're the front piece. man. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm just an you're actor. You're the the organization? I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> you remember that one? That was an actual rumor or idea. I did not. I actually never Warner heard Bro- that one. Warner Brothers owns it. The jet's not even real. That's all wow. fake. You're hmm. standing. Yes. So, We're- all right. Announcer Rachel, finally. Announcer Rachel. We'll finish up here and we'll catch you next time. Let's ride. You have been listening to the BOF Social Hour, Jet's official podcast on Batman on Film. Follow BOF on threads at the Batman on Film. Follow BOF on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Batman on Film. To help keep BOF up and running, go to patreon.com slash batmanonfilm, or you can buy BOF a beer at buymeacoffee.com slash therealbatmanonfilm. For Jet and everyone at BOF, I'm announcer Rachel. Authoritative, definitive, the original, Batman on Film, founded in 1998. Say goodbye, Graceland.